And now let's move on to the heart of the head. This part where the focusing lens is located, the collimator, well, these lenses that condition the laser, the light, so that it has the right shape for cutting. Here we also have a servo motor, which moves the focusing lens to perform piercings or different stages. That is, to set that fine part of the laser exactly in the position we want. So let's get started. The servo motor, the collimator, and the focusing lens are the main parts at the heart of the head. First, here we have the servo motor, which basically is what moves the focusing lens. This, well, this connector is constantly moving the focal lens. Here, we have some linear guides to allow for free movement, and inside here, well, there's the the focusing lens is what shapes the laser into a cone and creates that fine point on the surface of the material. And here we also have the collimator, which is before the focusing lens, at the top, and well, the collimator. Basically, what it does first is condition the light so that it travels in a sort of cylinder. So, well, there's a module that, in fact, isn't just a single lens. There are two lenses here that we can see. And of course, someone might ask, Diego, how are you opening the head? And it's supposed to be a completely sterile area. In fact, we're opening this up in a non-sterile environment because this head is damaged, some parts and a bit of dust got in due to the operator's carelessness, and look what happens, it creates these spots, because when the laser reacts with the dust, it starts to generate heat and leaves these stains that block the light. Finally, when one of these stains appears, the head stops working completely. So, one of the main precautions is to never let this kind of dust or any debris or sparks get into the head. These would be the main parts. Honestly, I really like it. We're going to take it apart a little more, but for now, we have it open enough. It's exposed enough for us to be able to explain it. Here in the collimator, I have some springs, and over here I have the two screws. All the heads come with this calibration system. That way, I can adjust the position of the collimator until it's perfectly perpendicular to the focusing lens. If it's not completely perpendicular, then the laser point will fall way too far to the right or left. So, this collimator, with the help of the springs and these two screws, Let's me move it along the X and Y axis and have the laser fully calibrated so it comes out right at the tip. This is the one that basically adjusts it so the beam comes out through the center of the nozzle. And this focus, on the other hand, is what raises and lowers this cone. That would be all for now. Let's keep taking it apart a little more. Now we have all the pieces of the optical system out, and with that, we can clearly understand how the head works. Let's start from the top. Here we have the QVH connector, which is where the source, the laser beam, enters and where the path begins. Next, we have a first protective lens that prevents any dust or sparks from getting into the heart of the head. Next, we have the collimator, which is this set of two lenses that 
Direct or modify the light beam so that it travels down as a cylinder and stays centered throughout its entire path. That's why we have a centering system with screws that have a very fine thread, so we can be precise. Then we have the focusing lens. This lens is what shapes the laser into a cone and concentrates it at a single point. A point so intense that it can actually cut through steel. You could say this is where the magic happens, and this is the only movable lens. In other words, it's also a set of two lenses, but this is the only one that moves while the head is operating. Here, we can see a gauge that goes from plus 10 to minus 10. And what moves it is a servo motor located at the back. This is the servo motor that, depending on the command sent from the computer, based on the material and the position, will adjust the focus. And with that, the position of this finest point is set. Next, we have a lower protective lens, usually called number two, which serves as a final barrier to protect this part, which is the heart of the laser. And finally, the bottom lens, which is the one constantly exposed to sparks or debris, since it's the first barrier for everything that enters through the nozzle. This is the path of the light. As we can see here, we have these three protective lenses, a collimator, and a focusing lens. And this servo motor system that moves additionally. There are other relatively simple things, for example, the limit switches, which are optical systems that notify the servo motor when it has reached the maximum upper or lower position. And also encoder systems that allow it to maintain feedback. Almost in real time, to know if the position of the servo motor for the focusing lens is correct. This is basically the entire structure of the head. As you can see, it's an almost completely optical system because we're working with light. The weight, in fact, is only for the sake of precision because they heat up and need to be cooled, but really, the ones doing all the work are this set of lenses. That's why we say that laser technology isn't such a complicated technology, but it is a very, very sensitive one. In fact, 90% of the problems we sometimes find in the industry are due to some kind of dust or debris getting into one of these systems, and that ends up blocking the light. And with that, the head is completely damaged. And now let's move on to the most important part, conclusions and recommendations. First of all, the handling or operation part must be carried out by experts. Therefore, well, the recommendation is to never open. If you have a head or a machine, or if you're going to buy a laser machine, never open any of these parts. In fact, that's what these videos are for, so you can see from the inside what their guts look like without needing to open up your own equipment. The moment you open it, you're exposing it to a non-sterile environment. Sometimes, in any scenario, in any environment, there are dust. There are tiny bits of lint that we don't notice, but when they get into the printhead, they interfere with the laser's path and end up damaging the printhead. That's the first recommendation. Now let's move on to point number two, the operating principle. What you see here is basically the principle behind 99% of fiber laser heads, the idea of having a collimator, a focusing lens, and protective lenses. All fiber laser heads have these. There are different variations. For example, some heads have temperature control on the lenses, so if they start getting too hot, you'll get a warning. Others have more internal cooling circuits built into these aluminum parts. And, well, depending on the power, the lenses are generally larger, and the parts tend to be bigger because they need more cooling. That's why. It's very noticeable. When you come across a larger head, it's usually higher power, but all of them follow the same operating principle. Let's say it's kind of like the principle behind cars. We're going to have a wide variety of cars, but the vast majority work on the same basic principle. Basically, it's an optical system that modifies the laser inside using certain components to achieve this goal. And number three, let's talk a little about quality. 
A lot of times we think that if a head is bigger, it's usually more expensive or higher quality, but that's not actually the case. The laser machine needs a smaller head to be able to accelerate faster and reach higher speeds. So, when you have a very heavy head that requires bigger servo motors and stronger moments of inertia. So ideally, you want heads that are as small and as light as possible, since that will be more efficient. The process. Another extremely important point is the quality of the lenses. While it's true that there are many brands on the market, there's Right Tools, there's also Presatech, and there's FS Cut as well. In this case, this head is specially manufactured for Forza Laser, so I highly doubt you'll find it on the market. And the head is not only defined by its components, but also by the quality of the lenses. These lenses, well, they're American, and depending on the internal components, the lifespan will vary. Which, well, is very hard to tell at first glance. That's why the recommendation is to trust laser specialists like us, really, since we live and breathe this technology day and night. Always looking for improvements, searching for the best tool, the best and most advanced head, the best source to achieve those perfect cuts in steel. And that's all for today. We also have another video of a different head being taken apart. You can find it on our YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe and leave us your comments. Questions or ideas for other videos you'd like us to make. See you soon. Bye-bye.